Oh, somebody's getting their Xterra done over there as well. That's nice to see another Xterra. And hello everyone and welcome to another video where we work on our truck. Sometimes we're successful, sometimes we're not. And uh, today's pretty big video. I was planning to do it for a long time. I wanted to do it. And finally I got all the parts that necessary. And as you can see, they all laid out over here. <laughs> Look at this. We're gonna be doing a lot of stuff today. We're gonna be changing the radiator. Very excited about that. I really wanted to do that ever since I did the bypass. So I got the radiator, play car rod. I got the extra canisters of the antifreeze. I got a canister of uh, transmission fluid because we're gonna be probably gonna be low on it. So we're gonna have to add it. I got my drain, little drain can over here. And I got all the parts over here. I'm gonna be replacing the lower hose, gonna replace the top hose. We're also gonna be replacing the serpentine belt. Since everything is apart, it's a good time to replace it as well. Because it's it's in pretty bad shape. I also when I got the new radiator and the uh, overflow uh, caps, I got new bushings, and of course I got the brand new OEM thermostat yes we're gonna be replacing the thermostat as well since everything is apart might as well replace that with a brand new gasket in here so it's a lot of stuff is gonna be happening today so let's hope everything goes well but before we drain the coolant before we do anything let's open up the radiator and look inside of it make sure that it's not damaged or anything because you know how the deliveries happen you've seen those videos How the UPS and FedEx and everybody else, how they deliver the stuff. So let's hope nothing is damaged because what's the sense of draining the system, taking everything apart and then just to find out that the radiator is damaged. Let's hope that's not going to happen. So let's open it up. Luckily, the box doesn't look damaged or anything. Luckily for me, this box came inside of that big box. So hopefully, hopefully that was all protected. But we're gonna find out right now. Put this on the side. And there we go. It's a box within a box within another box. All right. And there is our brand new radiator. Let's sit on the ground so we can pull it out carefully. There's a drain plug. This looks... This looks fine. And this looks fine. And this looks fine. And look at all of those fins. They all look good. Everything sends... Everything looks good. Alright, so let's set it on the side for now. So let's pop the hood open. There we go. Now, my important thing is to, whenever you work on the radiator, make sure that the car is cold. You never want to open this while the car is hot. Now, since we're going to be working on the radiator at the front over here, we're going to be moving some parts around. So it's very important to disconnect the battery terminal. Since we have a sensor for airbags at the front over here, we don't want to accidentally touch them or anything. So it's pretty smart idea to just to be play safe and disconnect the negative battery terminal. So let's get our 10 millimeter wrench and unscrew it. Okay, very nice. And let's put it on the side so it doesn't touch it again. Now, before we drain our coolant, we gotta remove our skid plate or what I call this just a rusty piece of metal. I already loosened up the bolt, slide it to the side. Now we can go ahead and remove the radiator cap to let some air in so whenever we start draining the coolant it will run down better <laughs> and go ahead and put a little bucket underneath with a big screwdriver carefully we can start unscrewing the plug it's 
so we can start draining all the coolant out. There we go. And as you can see, the coolant looks pretty good. It's pretty clean. So that's a good part. So let it all drain down and then we can start taking everything apart. Now as the coolant still draining down there, we can start taking slowly everything apart over here. We'll need to take all of this out, we'll have to undo the bumper slightly so we can remove these brackets over here. We have some hoses to remove, but yeah, let's start by unplugging the Mars Airflow sensor. Now there's a two bolts in here that we have to remove. We have to undo this connection over here so we can remove the whole uh, air intake. So we're just gonna unbolt these two bolts over here. This part loose, I have enough space over here to get my wrench in there, my little wrench, and just undo it by hand. And a second one. There we go. Now that these two screws are out, we can just simply un unclip this and then we're gonna unscrew this part over here. There we go. I get it nice and loose. Now we need to disconnect this. To do that, just simply push it back, twist it around to break the seal and just push it out. There we go. Now we have to remove this cl little clip over here without hopefully breaking it. For little spots like that, sometimes I like to use this, like a needle nose, so Leatherman in this case. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just gotta be careful not to break it. There we go, nice and easy. There is a little hose connected over here with a little, with a similar connection. So undo that, just simply squeeze it again and pull it out and hopefully it comes out without breaking. There you go. Just gotta remember to put it back in place. Now we can remove the whole assembly out. There you go. Okay, now we're gonna disconnect this overflow hose that goes to the overflow overflow tank. Just simply pull it. You can pull it out all together. There we go. Pull it from this little plastic over here, over here, and that's it. Now we have a little connection over here goes to for the the fan which we have to pull out as well. Okay, just push it over here. And it's going to slide out. There we go. So now this is out of the way. Now we can remove this upper hose and we slowly going to advance down removing all the necessary parts that we need to remove. Now to remove this upper hose, again, we're just going to use this channel axe. Just pull on this rusty strop, push to the side. And as well for this one, we're going to remove this one as well. It's all rusty, it's old, it's about to break. Let's pull it to the side. That's it. Nice. Now we're just going to break the seal by moving back and forth a couple of times. And that's it. Let's remove this from over here. Hopefully. Alright. Finally broke it loose. Let's pull it out. Yikes. Look inside. Mm. Doesn't look that terrible, but... We're going to replace it anyways. 
At least the inside looks clean. It's cleaned with paper towel in the meantime. All right, we are getting somewhere again, guys. <laughs> now this is out, this is out. Now we can simply undo these little plastic clips, which are very easy to remove. Some of them are even broken, unfortunately. So to remove them, it's very easy. Just pull the middle part out. You might want to use a screwdriver to pull the middle part out, and then you can slide the whole thing out carefully. I uh, really need to get a new ones to replace all of this but I, w I didn't bother before because I knew this was coming that I'm gonna be replacing the radiator so yeah and just by pulling it like that we have enough space to work to lose these screws now again this is a 10 millimeter so that's what we're gonna be doing we're gonna be using a 10 millimeter so as always I run into some rusty bolts so these two bolts over here are very rusty and I don't want to break them so I know I'm gonna try to spray some some brake penetrating stuff so while this gets all worked up over there, we're gonna remove some stuff down there. Now we're gonna remove the lower hose and let it all the remaining antifreeze to leak down here. And we should be good to go soon to, to start disassembling the radiator so we can take it out completely. Okay, almost nothing there. That's pretty good. And I already replaced this this before because the the one I had there it cracked, but luckily I noticed it in time and I replaced it without any any major damage to my truck. So as you can see, it's not too bad. Don't mind the dirt. It just what well, was falling from while I was working on the truck, but there is no, luckily, thankfully, there is no any sign of the um, contamination with the transmission. So that's good, right? All right, let's give it another shot, another attempt to unscrew this. Nice. There's one. Gonna apply more braking fluid. Okay, so while this is working in there, we're gonna start trying to remove this shroud. We gotta have to remove these two bolts over here. So let's remove this ten, two bolts over here. It's one. And two. Okay, now this is loose. We can start trying to wiggle it out of the way. All we have to do is disconnect this uh, transmission line over here. Just, just clips in there. I hope you guys can see it. And then this should come apart. Underneath over there, it's made of like two pieces. So we just have to, so we just have to take the pieces apart, and then we can take out the top and the bottom portion. Okay. So while we're down here, we have to remove this transmission line from over here. There we go. There's a little clip over here. If I'm not mistaken, if we pull on that, 
There you go. Then there is another clip over there. We just have to remove it. There you go. Now before we remove the fan shroud, we have to remove these bolts so we can remove the fan. So as always, it's a 10 millimeter. And the fan just sits on on like little legs inside the pins inside there and one over on the side of there. So that should be easy to remove. There we go. Let's pull it out carefully. That's it. Okay, now that the fan is gone, now we can actually remove the fan shroud. There we go. Nice and easy. Let's put that on the side as well. Let's remove the little plastic piece from down there. Okay, look at all this space we're getting here. And finally can get we can get a better look at the radiator. So now that that is gone, we can start trying to remove the radiator itself. We already loosened this up. So let's take this out. Let's get our 10 millimeter ratchet again and try to remove this bolt. Carefully start unscrewing it. There we go, nice and easy, and okay, and this is out as well, there we go, a little bit rusty, maybe a little bit too rusty, I'll see if I can clean it. Alright, so now we have these two bolts over here and over here that we have to unscrew, that way we can take off these brackets and then hopefully <laughs> we can remove the whole radiator, so let's do that. This uh, space over here is a little bit tight, but with the help of our little key over here, it should be fine. Two thousand years later. All right, and with a little bit of patience, those bolts are out. So now we can actually attempt to remove the radiator. And to do that, we just simply have to lift it up. Carefully, so we don't touch any lines or anything. Without breaking anything. That's the important part to do without breaking anything. Carefully to remove it. So we have to just start pushing it out, or should I say start pulling it out carefully. I probably should have removed that hose before, but it's okay. Okay. Carefully, carefully. Okay guys, so what I ended up doing, I removed the, the, the battery as well, so hopefully now I have more room to easily take it, take it out. Okay, okay, and oh yes, and it's out, nice, nice. Alright, it's always important just to check to make sure that all the connection everything is the same and as you can tell guys everything is everything is the same nice and okay now that the radiator is out we have so much clear space over here we can actually go ahead and replace the serpentine belt look how it's all worn out it's it's pretty old i don't think it was ever changed i don't think it was ever changed and to change it is pretty easy all we have to do is just 
we're gonna insert the half inch socket over here and, and turn it kind of clockwise and that will pull this lever down and we can just remove it from all these pulleys and then we're just gonna follow the same route it's pretty easy you have to slide it underneath over there first and all you have to do is just follow the grooves wherever you see the grooves that's the part with the grooves on the bell has to go wherever it's not like over here and over there that's where the other part is gonna go so without further ado let's take it out let's take a wrench insert it in here and we're just gonna push it current clockwise and that's it that's all we needed now we can remove the belt from all the pulleys from there from here and from down there slide it from under the fan and that's it and the bell is out look how old it is I mean it was not squeaking or anything but it's just old <laughs> so out with old and in with a new okay straighten it out okay now let's put the new belt inside all we have to do is just get it under the fan and put it over these two pulleys like so and the bottom part like so and start guiding it over to the appropriate location it's gonna go here this is gonna go on top of this one and this one is gonna reach over here and over here of course but before we do that we're actually gonna put it over here we're gonna let that one loose for now we're gonna put it over the lower one and a higher one over here okay let's make sure it's all in place nice and neat okay like so like so make sure they all go into the grooves all right and now what we're we gonna do we're gonna stick our ratchet in here again and we're gonna push it kind of clockwise so we can go over this the last pulley over here nice and easy watch your fingers okay, make sure everything in place like that and now we can carefully release all right and that was it just gotta make sure that everything is nice and inside the grooves just double check with your fingers and everything looks nice okay guys now we have a new serpentil bound installed okay so now that that is done so now we can start working on a thermostat we need to disconnect these two lines and unscrew three bolts in there so let's do that so first of all of course we have to remove this coupling over here another coupling the connector which can be problematic maybe not <sighs> okay I almost got it all right now let's see if we can try to break it loose there we go Now I'm just gonna use some paper towel to put it over our brand new serpentine belt. I don't want anything to get on it. Okay. Not too bad. Now we'll remove our hose. Oh, it's actually secured over there. 
didn't even know that. It's just a big screwdriver. We can open it up and take it out. Okay, now let's see if we can unscrew those three bolts over there. And then we can maybe take this out. Let's do it that way. Let's see if we're gonna be successful. Okay, so that's gonna be a 10 millimeter over there, of course. And that should not have any too much tension because that's a aluminum block. Okay, that's one. That's two. And where's the third one? The third one is all the way down there. I can barely see it. But it's there. Trust me, guys. I'm not making this up. Okay. So now that they are loose. I just undo it more. Okay, and then the next bolt is over here. Just keep unscrewing it. Just gotta make sure you have a bucket or something underneath because it's gonna spill more coolant. Okay, and let's undo the last bolt over there. All right, and this is out. Let's pull it out carefully. Luckily the gasket came off as well. Let's take the screws out without dropping them or anything. Okay, that will be not good. Third screw and a gasket. All right. These gaskets are not reusable, so we're gonna have to use a new gasket. Okay, now we can undo this line easy. There we go. And I'm actually gonna be changing this connector to a new one. So, and this is all pretty sealed up over here. So let's see if we can carefully break the seal. Just gotta wiggle it around a little bit. And that should hopefully do it. Okay, now let's see if we can do it by hand. There we go. Broke, we broke the seal. Now let's just pull it out. There we go. Very nice. So, and this is our old thermostat, which doesn't feel too bad, actually, if you ask me. But since we are replacing all of it, might as well replace that now. Now let's clean everything over here. Gotta make sure everything is clean. Kind of concerned about this, uh, that little oil spot over there. I don't know where that's coming from. I'm not losing oil or anything, but that's strange. All right, guys. So now we can go ahead and uh, start putting our new thermostat in. So here it is, brand new thermostat and a brand new gasket. So let's put this on the side, or throw it on the side. <laughs> and now let's take out the gasket and align it and screw it back in place. Okay, so here's a gasket and our thermostat, and it only goes one way in, just like that. Just gotta make sure you put it right. These little edges, they are supposed to align and yeah, just gonna have to do it by hand first so we can actually see where we are putting it because it's kind of gonna be, we're kind of gonna be working blind there, if you know what I mean. So this is very important part that 
I don't even see what I'm doing. But if we are lucky, we should be fine. Okay, so I think the best way is to do it is to put all three screws in and make sure that the gasket is in the right spot like that and just, just holding it, holding it by your, with your hands bring it to the spot where it has to go and carefully align it with the holes and kind of seat it in place and start screwing it by hand each screw carefully the key word is carefully there we go you kind of got to feel that the screw goes into the right place and that it's going straight it you're not going crooked with that screw it might sound easier than done but believe me guys i think that's the only way to do it right i cannot even see what i'm doing myself working blind but that's just how it is and okay now we can start tightening the bolts up carefully and this doesn't need to be very tightened up this is aluminum block you have to be very careful not to strip the bolts or the threads but then you're gonna be sorry it has to be tight but that's about it i'm gonna make them tight but not super tight you know just use the common sense and that's it that feels good that feels good to me now we can reinsert this hose back there we go and we tighten this up okay that feels good it feels tight enough I actually removed the serpentine bell again so I can get a better access over here but now we can put it back in place but first we gotta attach the lower hose now just to double check, the newer lower hose is exactly the same as the old one. So that's what we're gonna use. I'm just gonna reuse this part over here, this little heat shield or whatever that is for. And I'm gonna put it on the old hose. So now we can put our new hose in place gonna guide it in place we here and we can put it on in there gonna push it all the way in there we go not gonna make it tight yet just because in case we have to adjust it we can always do it now let's push it inside this little clamp and let's leave it like that for now okay so this is done so now we can go ahead and put a serpentine belt back in place let's reinsert this ratchet in here push it all the way down all the way down so we can lift this up and put it in place carefully don't crimp your fingers there we go now let's double check that everything is in place and now let's release there we go so now we can go ahead and proceed with uh, assembling the new radiator so now what we're gonna do we have to transfer these brackets from the sides to our new radiator so let's do that let's cut this open Yeah, let's examine the radiator once more okay looks good looks good 
our drain plug is there. Okay, so this looks a little bit rusty. And also I got new bushings for here. Okay, so now with the 12 millimeter, hopefully we can take this out without breaking but it looks so rusty okay that's one let's do the second side okay so this nut started to spin so I'm gonna try to hold it with a 12 millimeter red 12 millimeter and try to do it again All right, that trick worked. All right, and it's out. Nice. Put it on the side. Now let's pull this side out. Okay. This goes on this side. And this goes on this side. Oh, wow, this is so rusty. Oh well. Now I also got these new bushings, so we're gonna replace some of these bushings. So we're gonna take this bushing out with the help of a screwdriver. Yes. Gonna try to take this bushing out. There you go. That's our old bushing. And this is our new one. Looks a bit thicker, but it's only because it's been all worn out. So let's put a new bushing in, there you go. Now the same part with this, we're gonna remove this old bushing. And we're gonna get our brand new bushing from over here. There you go. Let's put it in place. Nice. Now we can go ahead and reattach this part over here slide it in there slide it under here and get a rusty bolt and put it in place there we go nice and tight now let's do the same for the other part for the other side let's remove this all bushing and let's put it on your bushing there you go and same part with this might need the help of a little wrench there we go let's grab a new bushing And let's put our new bushing in place over here as well. Nice. Let's align the pin. Slide it inside. And now we can screw the second rusty bolt in place. nice all right so this is all assembled this is all done now we can go ahead and replace a couple of bushings up there let's put this on the side now if you look over here this is our condenser it, and it also has two bushings which sit like uh, on top of the radiator bracket and if you notice they're all done they're all completely dry and ugh ugly no good so that's why i got another two bushings for there so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna replace those bushings as well everybody gets bushings <laughs> you get bushings everybody gets bushings look at that the old one and the new one so out with the old and in with the new let's put it in place there we go and the same we're gonna do for a second 
One over there. Right there. Out with the old. And in with the new. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. This, this one is completely done. Okay, so now it's the fun part of putting the radiator back in place. Let's hope it all goes easy. Okay, so let's start lowering it down carefully again. But now without the battery, it's much, much easier to work in here. Okay, almost there, almost there. Okay, and it's almost in place. Okay, nice. We're getting there, guys. <laughs> We're getting there. Just gotta make sure that we don't crimp anything that we don't have water crimp so now we can work our way back and start assembling everything back so we need to put a condenser back to the radiator so we can assemble it all together and to do that we have to carefully lift it up and once we do that it has to go in those two little grooves over there we have the condenser sitting right in place so now we can start screwing this back in place with our two bolts hopefully we remember which ones are those all right so this is our two bolts so now carefully without dropping them just by hand at first we can start putting them back in place and then just with a little branch or with a little key we can screw it all the way and okay these screws are tight nice and neat let's double check this one all right this is done so now we can put the radiator back in those little grooves over there I hope you guys can see it and one there and one there just to put it back in place where it's supposed to be okay and it has to slide slide down in there There we go. Nice. Now we can put the brackets over here. So once again, we're gonna be replacing these bushings over here because they are all dry. They dry as a rock. So we're gonna replace them. So our result, and right here, we have uh, two new ones. There we go one here there we go and the same one for over here out with the old in with the new just throw that away <laughs> there we go put this in there nice very nice so now we're just gonna put the two screws back in place and that will be it for securing the radiator. Also, just for now, I put the old cap in place. I don't want any debris to fall in there or anything. That would be not nice. Okay, so we're gonna take our screws. The two rusty screws <laughs> and put them back in place. And now with the help of uh, power tools, that will make the job 
easier and faster. There we go. Now we can go ahead and put our plastic halfway broken pins back in place. Trust me guys, I'm gonna be replacing them soon. Don't worry about that. <laughs> there we go. This is done. This is done. Now we can move over here. Okay, so now we can start putting everything back in place, starting by the radiator shroud. So hopefully, the way it came out, it can go back in. And also, we gotta put the electric fan in place as well. So let's see if we can do it at the same time. Because they both have to go kinda at the same time, I feel like. So now the fan has little legs over there that has to clip in on the bottom of the radiator and so is uh, over here on the side. Just gotta move the transmission lines out of the way. There we go. And this goes in there and this goes in there. That's it. Nice. And so this part. There we go. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad at all, guys. Now we just have to screw three bolts in here and we can start assembling the bottom. So we have three bolts over here. You can do it by hand. You can do it with a ratchet or with the power tools. But since this, this is all plastic, I would just do it with a ratchet. Two. Now we can attach our top radiator hose. Okay, just push it all the way in. nice and we're gonna be using our new clamps just gonna put them on right now and let's put our new radiator hose into the radiator all the way nice these ones are a little bit too big the clamps but it's okay we can always cut them shorter Okay, now I'm gonna do it actually by hand to feel how much pressure I'm applying to it. Okay, that looks good. Now let's do the same with this one. All right. Perfect. So now that we're down here, let's see if we can reattach this this flimsy plastic back in place. It's supposed to go all the way around here, in here, somewhere there, and just like so goes in there, this clips in here, this clips in there, this clips in here. This part goes in there, clips inside there, supposedly. Okay, got one side in. Okay, and then this part, oh, looks like it's already in, oh, but I made a mistake, I made a mistake, guys, 
I was supposed to... Oh, no big deal. This goes in here. And this goes in here. Nice! Nice! Very nice! Since we're down here, let's reconnect this as well. There we go. Put it in place. And now we can put the hose, the radiator hose in place as well. There we go. All the way. All the way. There we go. Nice. Now we can close this strap as well. So now let's just secure our bottom hose. Make it nice and snug. Very nice. So a while back we did a transmission radiator bypass. So that's what it looked like. But now we're gonna have to take this hose because we're gonna need to reuse it again. So why are we gonna use the new straps? Because this one's are no good. Wow, this one almost broke, this strap. In this case, we're gonna have to take out this line and put it in here. And this line from here, it's gonna go back into there. And that's way we're no longer gonna have a radiator bypass, which is which is good because we're gonna have our brand new radiator. I'm gonna have to undo this and swap it in here real quick. And the other one, the other part of the hose, I have to put it in there real quick as well. So we don't lose too much of a... Uh... First I have to, gonna have to put this in here. There we go. Nice. Now we can slide in here. Okay, and let's just leave this over here for now. Once I undo that side, we're gonna just connect it into there. Now we're gonna loosen up that. Okay, that's loose. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna undo this one, and I'm gonna put this one in there, and I'm gonna reuse this one, this connector in here, and I'm gonna use this new type in here. That's all I'm gonna do. All right, so just make sure you have some paper towel or piece of clothes handy because as you pull this hose out, it's gonna leak out, more, more like. Okay, nothing yet. All nice and dry so far, hopefully. <laughs> Let's put this one in there, like that. This goes into here. Okay, and this all the way in there. Nice. Very nice. Now we can tighten this up. Let's change this one a little bit. Oh, there we go. Like I told you, it's gonna leak a little bit, but no big deal. There we go. And this goes in there here like that. Now we're just gonna. Now we're just gonna release this clamp, so we can slide it in place and crimp it. Okay, this is in place and this is in place. Nice. Now we're just gonna tighten this up. Nice. That's it. Wipe everything out. And okay, I believe. Oh, no, we gotta secure that one. Almost forgot. Let's secure this one over here. Put it where it's supposed to be. Okay. There we go. Nice. Okay. So this is done. Let's move upstairs. So let's just finish up assembling all of this here. 
First of all, let's connect this uh, electrical plug to the fan. That would be very bad if we will forget to con reconnect it. Let's put this in back in place here. And this back in place here. Or was it somewhere in place? Right here. There we go. Nice, nice. This is all in place, this is all in place. Now let's put the air intake back in place. So now it will be a good time to check how the air filter looks. So let's take it out and look inside. It's a little bit dirty, but not too bad. So let's vacuum it. Let's, let's put this back in place, just like that. This slides in here, there we go. Now we have two bolts over here. This can go in place as well. Oh wow, this is no good. I broke one. Oh well, it is what it is. And I have to get a new one. Make sure it's all in place. Okay. Can I still like it at least temporary? Yeah, all right, at least temporary until I get a new one. <laughs> okay, so let's reconnect our mass airflow sensor. Okay, let's reconnect this line. Put it all, on, all in there. And this one is not too hard. You can even do it with your hands. There we go. Now let's screw all of these bolts in place and of course let's secure this as well. I'm gonna start it out with a power tool just to speed the things up. And now I'm gonna finish off by hand. That's good. Nice and tight. Okay, so now we can screw the two screws over here and two screws over here and we are pretty much done. So let's do that. This is one, this is two. And again with a 10 millimeter. Now let's screw the tops, two screws. And that's it. Okay, now we can put the battery back in place. But before we do that, let's reconnect our overflow hose. That's very important as well. Goes in here, this goes in here. back in place and that's it. good all right now we can put the battery back in place And okay, so now it's time to start pouring in the coolant. But before we do that, I'm gonna lift up the truck slightly higher. So this part of the truck is gonna be higher in the air. So we're gonna be adding the coolant. All the air hopefully is gonna be coming out from here. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna get our jack, jack stands and gonna lift it up. Now we can start pouring in all our new coolant. So 
this is what I got. I got the 5050 premix. So that should be good. And okay. Keep on check, make sure that nothing is leaking anywhere in case we forgot to connect any hoses. <laughs> Let's remove this. All right, so that's one gallon. Now we're gonna get another one. And there goes our second gallon. And it's also recommended to squeeze this hose, leave it, as you saw over there. I still had a lot over there, but as I squeeze, it keeps going out. So we kind of burp in the system. <laughs> and okay. Right now it looks filled up to the top. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna go and start up the truck and get it to operating temperature. So then the thermostat is gonna open up and it's gonna take in more coolant into the engine bay. So let's do that. But of course, before we do that, we got to reconnect the battery. Make it nice and tight. There we go. And now let's reconnect the negative terminal. So everything is connected. All the connections here, all the connections here. The radiator is full over here for now. So Let's start it up. Now, as you start it up, you got to make sure you put the heat on and let it blow and put it to the maximum. So there you go. Now we just got to keep an eye on the temperature gate as well. So we're gonna keep an eye on the temperature gauge as it goes up. The thermostat is gonna open up and we gotta add more, more coolant. So just gotta keep an eye on that so it doesn't go too high, but hopefully it's not gonna happen, of course. And this, of course, has to be blowing. All of this has to be working. Yeah, the, the arrow is going up slowly. So let's see if we need to add more fluid.
Okay, it sounds like the, the engine is coming to the normal operating temperature. Okay. Burp the system a little bit. Let's check for any leaks. Hopefully nothing is leaking anywhere. We would not want that. not leaking from the thermostat either but it looks looks dry thankfully it looks dry okay the air is slowly creeping up to the normal operating temperature by the way guys don't rush to assemble everything <laughs> when you assemble just double check that you tighten everything out and put everything in place i just remember that i never tighten up that connector over there there we go not gonna make it tight yet just because in case we have to adjust it but luckily luckily i remember and luckily i have a place to put a little wrench in there and tighten it up for the lower radiator hose that gets connected to the thermostat and okay that looks good okay i think this is pretty good so let's put a, our new cap let's see which one is this it's gonna be this one and if you see they are pretty, pretty new, pretty. They're pretty the same caps. So we're gonna put a new one. Now let's top off the overflow. Put our cap on the water floor. Check the gauge. Still pretty good. All right, let's lower down the truck. Now we also need to add the automatic transmission because we lost some. So that's what we're gonna do now too. We're gonna make sure we have enough automatic transmission. So let's pull the stick out. Wipe it off. Reinsert. Some people say you should twist it. Pull it out. And yeah, we are low. So we're gonna add it more. Check it again. Let's pull it out. Try it again. Pull it out. I'm gonna add a little more. We still like middle portion of. I had about up to here and that's how much I refilled. So let's see if that was enough. 
Sorry. Pull it out. Push it in there again. Pull it out. Okay, I think this is good now. We are good on automatic transmission. Now we just gotta keep an eye on uh, on a coolant level. Let's just double check that nothing is leaking anywhere. This I don't see any drips. This is just I spilled previously. And all right, everyone, it's all done. Everything back in place, the truck is running fine at, at normal temperature, it's blowing hot air, so that's good. And look how much parts we replaced. We replaced the serpentine belt, we replaced uh, two hoses, a bunch of grommets that are all worn out, all dirty, all beat up. We replaced the cups, we replaced the thermostat, and of course we replaced the radiator. And we no longer have a radiator bypass, so now all the transmission cooling is gonna go through the radiator, it's gonna be all cooled down and nice. So that's good. That's so great when you can work in your truck and you and you can actually accomplish what you plan to do. So I'm very glad that this happened. So now we have everything new over here, nice and neat. I really like it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. So and of course there's gonna be more content later on so but on this note i hope you guys having a great time and until next time bye